Every baking dish I make, I attach two handles to it, one on either side. And it's laborious. So I've come up with this other system of making handles, and they're cut from the rim. So I've pre-made this, it's soft leather hard, but I want to show you how I throw this, and then we'll do the handles. The first thing I'm going to do is attach it back to the wheel head. Lightly dampen it. You know, before I attach every piece of clay to the wheel head, I do this to it, which domes it and makes it very smooth. This is maybe a little damp, this surface, but it's not wet. By, by doing this doming thing and smoothing, I assure myself that I'm not trapping any air between the clay and the wheel head. So the first thing I do is get it centered and opened. This is a three and a half pound piece of clay. And the base is about oh, a little less than half an inch thick. Again, this is a piece of baking ware, so I make them kind of robust and a little chunky. I'm going to rib from 11 o'clock to center, smooth that and compress the floor a little bit. Now draw this upward. Now as I draw the wall upward, I'm drawing it inward also. Eventually, I'll lay it out. But what I want is this fat, flat rim at the top. I want to make sure that this edge out here isn't too thin. Try and bring all the clay up into the pot. And one of the ways I do that is by using the tip of my thumb push it in at the base, which creates a groove. Add water to that groove, and that's where my fingertips start the pool. Now this flange, or this rim on the top, I'm going to lay it slightly downward, just a little bit. Pull it outward, but make sure, again, that this rim isn't too thick or too thin. Clean the water from the inside and now lay it out a little bit. And here I'm going to use the edge of this, the short edge of my undercut rib. I'm going to undercut and I'm going to use it to flatten out and straighten the wall. Now as I do this, I'm also pulling the wall outward. Undercut again. And sponge everything clean. Now that's as far as I go at this point. I'm going to wire it off. Oh, before I do that, I do this one little thing at the center of almost every open piece of pottery I make. I take my thumb tip, or my fingertip, sorry, and I slide it right to the center. And I'll show you this. Wire off. That little swirl is just a focal point, a visual focal point, when the pot's finished. So, I'm going to let this set up and dry till it's a very, very soft leather hard, but the tackiness has got to leave the pot before I can start working on it. Okay, this piece is still pretty soft. I made this yesterday. and I can bend the rim a little bit without cracking it. That's about the consistency you want to work with at this point. I'm going to attach this back to the wheel head. I'm going to use my wire to make some marks on the rim, which are guides. So I'm going to stretch the wire across the very center of the pot and I'm going to touch the rim here and here. Now I'm going to make a decision how wide do I want my handle to be. And usually about four inches is about right. So if I do the same thing, mark here and here, having turned the wheel four inches, I've got my marks consistent on both sides. Okay. These are 
cookie cutters, or we call them hole cutters. And uh, you can see them on my website at vangularpottery.com. They're really useful. Now, on this rim, before I actually make the cut with the cutter, I'm going to use my fingernail. I'm going to make a very light line. Now, that line designates the wall thickness that's inside the pot here, below the rim. So, I'm going to move this cutter up against that line. I don't want to cut into the outside wall of the pot. And I'm going to punch this through. I'm going to do it again here. And here. And the last one. Okay, that's the start. Now that looks pretty odd. But the next step defines the handles. Now again, I'm going to use this wire knife, again, a tool you can get on my website. I'm going to solidify my hand right here at the edge of the wheel, go into the very bottom area of my cutout, hold on to it steadily, and turn the wheel until I meet this one. I'm going to do the same here. Now, usually this one thing happens. We're a bit tentative with this cut using this tool, and that's a good thing. But what I want is some lines on this. So I'm going to take this cheese cutter. Now I've replaced the wire that comes on the cheese cutter with my piece of wiggle wire. I also decided that I needed to epoxy this roller so it doesn't move. If it's moving, whatever I'm cutting off the pot gathers around the roller. That's not a good thing. So now I'm going to come back in here and make another pass. What I want is this line to connect at the same level as the bottom of my cutout. So it sometimes takes a few times. That's pretty good. And do it on this side too. And one more. Okay. Last thing I'm going to do is soften these edges. I'm going to use my sponge. Now, if, if your pot is too soft, you'll dent the rim at this point. But sometimes we use that to our advantage. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to take this fuzzy piece of masonite. It's smooth on this side and fuzzy on this side. And I've explained in some other clips that this fuzzy side doesn't stick to the clay. I'm going to square this up just a little bit. Make sure they're the same length. And one more undercut with the wire in the direction of the length of the baking dish. Now when this is even stiffer, I'm going to flip it over, put it on a pad, and I'm going to skim and lightly smooth and round the base edge. But what a simple way to make handles.